today we'll revise the top 3 most asked interview questions and answers why because in an interview it is not sufficient enough to just know the correct answer you also have to answer very briefly and precisely because you just have 2 to 3 minutes to answer a question so without further delay let's get into it the one that tops the list is this question which is asked to almost 100 plus candidates and that also from past 5 to 10 years which is what is cavitation flashing and choke flow and control valve this is extremely important and today we'll try to again revise this concept so imagine this is your valve put in a line now with the flow there is some restriction put so you're going to have a dp or a differential pressure created to it so the upstream pressure is p1 and the downstream pressure is p2 now imagine that this is your vapor pressure curve so what happens when the fluid is going to be at this particular uh, region the fluid is going to change from liquid state to vapor state and this stage is called as the point where the liquid changes to vapor phase now at the exact opposite side if you notice the va the vapor is going to turn back into liquid state here what is going to happen is the the bubbles are going to burst to come back to liquid state which is called as popping which has very high velocities that can damage the valve and the piping downstream this entire phenomenon is called as cavitation now we look into the next case which is when there is flow to the valve but what happens is the pressure downstream does not recover this happens when the pressure downstream is still below the vapor pressure curve this phenomenon here makes the liquid to still stay in the vapor pressure phase in the downstream and this phenomenon is called as flashing what happens here is imagine that this is your valve and this is your pressure drop happening we are very sure with the concept that if we increase dp there is going to be an increase in flow but we keep increasing dp at a point of time flow will not increase this point is called as choked flow the next most asked interview question is what is cv in a control valve cv is the number of us gallons of water that can flow through a valve with one psi pressure drop at 60 degree fahrenheit for one minute the third most asked interview question which even you would agree that an instrumentation engineer must know is how to prepare an instrument data sheet because in his life cycle as an instrumentation engineer you have to prepare an instrument data sheet or study the data sheet so let's look into this concept the first step in preparing an instrument data sheet is to freeze the format of the data sheet we could refer to international standards which is recommended like isa 20 or we could go for client formats which we can use and first we need to freeze the format of the data sheet once this is done then the interesting part starts so the second step here is to divide the data sheet so we'll divide our data sheet into four parts which is going to be the general part process mechanical and instrumentation part so first we look into the general part here the input document especially and predominantly is the pnid but what in the pnid is used to fill the general section the first step is to fill the tag number so we get to know from the pnid what is the tag number which system is it going to go which line number is it there or the equipment number etc so all the basic details are known from the pnid so the first document to make a data sheet is the pnid once we are completed with this step then the next step is to get the process data for this the process engineer would be very helpful they prepare a document called as ipds which stands for instrument process data sheet and this is the basis to fill the process section of an instrument data sheet now here you would have a question that in ipds what does it contain ipds basically contains the fluid its name properties and some special needs for example it's corrosive toxic erosive etc also it will have the minimum normal and maximum conditions of the pressure and the temperature that the particular instrument will have to face also you would have to get the design conditions for example the design pressure and temperature now what is this difference between design conditions is that the design conditions are something which the instrument would experience at very low intervals or at very extreme intervals maybe during the start up of a plant but won't be regularly exposed to that now we look into the next section which is the mechanical section 
This is a very interesting and important section where we get a document called as piping material specification that we'll have to use to make such things. Now, a lot of people have this question that why is it so important and how do instrument engineers usually select their material? So imagine that this is our instrument put in a pipe which has the fluid flowing through it. Now, if you would notice that the same fluid which is flowing through the pipe is going to flow through our instrument. So here, if we take our example that the piping has the material carbon steel. So our instrument could have something which is same or higher than that, which could be, for example, stainless steel, because the same fluid is going to flow through our instrument. However, if the piping material is hashed alloy, which is C276, for example, then we cannot take SS316. We'll have to take a material which is either the same or higher, which is usually preferred. So for such case, piping material spec becomes very important document, which is called as PMS in short. And it also helps us to understand that what is the trim material. So for example, if the piping valve, which is a normal manual wall, would have a particular trim, then our instrument automatic valve could also have the same trim material. Also, what various standards like NACE that the piping is going to ask certification, we are instrumentation engineers also would have to ask the same certification. Now I would like to share something with you that I produce a new video every Saturday. So if you're liking this video, please subscribe so that you can receive a new video every Saturday. Now, I also would like to share that now what is the part related to the instrument, which will try to break it into three parts, which is the instrument itself, its amazing accessories and the notes section. So for the first part, which is what is the part of the instrument itself? This includes, for example, the own components of the instrument. Let's take an example of pressure gauge. So here the accuracy of the instrument, what is the range, what is the body material and especially what are the end connections? Is it a threaded connections or a flange connection, etc. But this varies. If it's a control wall, it could have certain other details like what is the calculated CV, the trim material, seat material, the seat tra stem, stem travel, etc. So this varies from instrument to instrument, which we will freeze in the form type. The second thing is the accessories. So for example, for a pressure gauge, you might require something like a siphon or you might require snubber, which is used if there is pulsating uh, discharge happening in the line uh, in the discharge of the pump for example or in control wall you might require a gauge so it depends on instrument to instrument what accessories would be required other than that what is the next thing that comes is in the instrument itself you might have certain details which you would not be able to cover in the form so we have the note section what happens here is in the note section for example we can say note one refers to a particular standard like NACE certification required etc or what client standard it should refer to. The second thing is the tag plate details. So sometimes in the note, the tag plate details are given. Or the third thing is some special service for that particular instrument, like hydrogen service where you require gold plating. I've made a separate video on that. So you could refer such cases where you know you can mention in the note section such cases. 